So how effective are biologic medicines for introducing or maintaining disease remission? So I'll give you the evidence for that. But what I would first emphasize is that all of us are not as smart as we uh, uh, think we are, or nearly all of us, and that includes doctors, and it includes researchers, and it includes regulators, and it includes the pharmaceutical industry. And yet, we all sort of know this, but we all forget it. And that's why we're kept honest with randomized controlled trials. If we look at the first biologic in Fliximab or Remicade, you think it was invented in a lab to treat uh, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, IBD. That is simply not the case. It was actually developed in animal models to uh, help inflammation of the pancreas. And it was trialed in that, in a randomized trial, because it seemed that it was working just great when you just uh, look to the see, see how it worked in a few patients. Uh, but when you did a randomized trial, you actually found that it was killing more people than it was saving. Because uh, this disease can kill you, uh, inflammation of the pancreas. And if you take this drug while your pancreas is inflamed, which by the way is very rare, so do not worry, and you'll know about it, you have excruciating pain when this happens, um, you uh, uh, you actually will die more frequently if you're on uh, Fliximab. So the, the drug company was ready to drop this product until a rheumatologist said, I think it'll work in rheumatoid arthritis and got some of the drug, showed that it did, uh, did a randomized trial and showed that it was fantastic in rheumatoid arthritis. By the way, every drug that's fantastic in rheumatoid arthritis up to that point have been fantastic in Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. So uh, gastroenterologists were straight onto this and tried it in their patients too. And lo and behold, it worked for them as well. But the point for this history lesson is that the way we got here was not linear and we didn't know what we were doing. It was just luck. And that's why you need randomized trials to tell you that something is working and how well something is working. And my job, uh, part of my job is to synthesize the evidence that people like Rebo produce in an unbiased way to give our best guess of how well something works. And in, on the left of the screen, as you look at it, is the Canadian position of statement on this, uh, led by uh, uh, Re uh, Rebo and Henry Steinhardt. Uh, I was involved in collecting the evidence, but they led the whole uh, group that came with this statement. And basically, these drugs should be used in Crohn's disease as long as it's moderately or, or moderate or severe. Um, and uh, uh, it can induce remission. And all the trials say that. Uh, and there are 500 odd patients in infliximab trials, 700 odd in Humira trials. That seems like a lot, but actually, and it is, this is why it's high quality evidence, but actually it just reaches that bar. And as an evidence-based medicine guy, I would really like to know more about this uh, as they were being developed, not necessarily now. Um, but I don't blame the drug companies. They will do whatever the regulators will allow them, will tell them to do. I think the regulators, particularly on the Humera and the Symphony drugs, should have asked for more data. You clearly asked for a bit more data, but really not enough in my view. So. We, are, we don't know as much as we think we do, even about these drugs. But what we do know is that our best guess is that they do work. And one person will go into remission uh, that wouldn't have gone with nature alone out of seven. So basically, you've got to treat seven people with these drugs for one to go into remission that wouldn't have gone into remission anyway. That isn't to say it only works in one in seven people, not at all. All, I'm, all that I'm saying is that actually, if you give placebo to people, some will go into remission. And it's just that one in seven extra will go into remission with these drugs. Now, as Remo said, that isn't 
that's remission and uh, sort of very high bar for people just improving and uh, um, uh, trying to hone therapy to uh, the best extent, you may get a greater response. But I would also emphasize whatever Remo or whatever I think the response is, we will overestimate it. That's why we do randomized trials. These drugs are have changed people's lives, but they're not as good as we would like. And this is why there are so many of them. This is why you see that pipeline uh, that uh, Remo showed. It's an excellent slide. Believe me, if these were drugs were uh, miracle workers, there wouldn't be that many drugs following them. So they're good, but they're not absolutely fantastic. They are absolutely fantastic for some people, but not all by any means. Uh, they, in those that respond, they are better at keeping you well. So if you go into remission and you, you should stay on them because uh, the um, uh, chances of you relapsing are a lot higher if you uh, uh, stop taking these drugs than if you carry on taking them. And we've got this from good randomized controlled trials. With ulcerative colitis, we've got one more anti TNF to think about and basically uh, these drugs work quite well in ulcerative colitis. Um, and given that we have three of these anti TNF therapies, the evidence base is actually pretty strong here. Uh, and the number of these three to four is actually pretty good. So I actually don't feel we need more data uh, to know that these drugs get you into remission. Uh, however, to stay there, actually, for the first two drugs, we didn't have anything. It's not that we didn't have any studies, but no randomized trial of people in remission randomized to placebo or uh, the anti-TNF. We actually didn't have any way. They got away with it. Again, it isn't the uh, uh, pharmaceutical industry that's to blame here. It is the regulator industry just allowing that to happen. But thankfully for sympathy, we do have that evidence. and It, it is pretty good as we might expect. Uh, uh, so that is somewhat reassuring. It is disappointing, though, that we don't have more evidence that in, to keep people in remission, uh, these drugs work well. Uh, so and that's only for anti-TNF, I would emphasize. For the other drugs, uh, the situation is different, but I just don't want to focus on that when we're focusing on the evidence here. 